I see. Hey. So excited. Yeah, really, really excited to be here. Learn about my brain. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. There's so much to talk about. More than ever. I'm very ready. Steve, thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited. Um, you know, our mission is to end mental illness. And I know people go, how do you do that? You create a revolution in brain health. That you call somebody mental, you shame them, you call them a brain, you elevate them. And, and as part of the mission, it's to make brain health cool. Yeah, absolutely. And you're a cool guy. And you do lots of <laughs> cool things. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you. I'm like, well, how fun is this going to be? Yeah. But when did you get interested in the brain? Late 2000s. Late 2000s. And my father passed away in 2008. That was probably like the spark that led me into this journey to understanding what, well, first of all, what killed him, which was cancer. And uh, when I started reading books on cancer, I started understanding about nutrition, understanding about a lot of things that could have prevented, you know, certain, like the illnesses that eventually did, did kill him. I got really into like Ray Kurzweil and what he's talking about singularity and AI and technology and, but it always led back all those books always led back to the brain and how there's so many mysteries about the brain that we need to unlock. And there's, there's just needs to be more funding, more research, more awareness, more, more just eyeballs on the whole field of neuroscience. And if we can unlock some of those doors, we could do some really profound, phenomenal things. When I was growing up in the sixties, space was the new frontier. And now it's the space between your ears that is the new frontier. Absolutely. The brain is the organ of decision-making. And if you want to have great relationships, it's the brain. And, and nobody thinks about it. If you see a marital therapist because you're having trouble, no one's going, well, we want to look at your brain first. They, they don't even think about it. But when your brain is trouble, Everything in your life is trouble. What's your goal? Well, um, because of my occupation, what I do, and it's, I mean, it's it's a 24-7 kind of job, you know, making music and DJing that music, you know, being a DJ and music producer. Sleepless nights, you know, we're up all night making music. And then when I'm on tour, I'm hitting different time zones and playing it all different hours of the night and there's no consistency of a schedule because that's one thing I learned if you want to have a healthy life long long life you need to sleep at the same time wake up at the same time and that's one thing that I've thrown out the window tell me about your tours I I have the Guinness Book of World Records most traveled musician on the planet in one calendar year okay, so I, I have this record and um, I am known to be one of the most hard, hardest working artists, let alone DJs, like amongst my peers. Everyone knows like Steve Aoki tours harder than everyone else. And I love the title because it's just been emboldened with my name. It's kind of like, I'm just very proud of this title. Obviously, it creates a problem with my sleep. So um, in 2015, I dropped a Netflix documentary called I'll Sleep When I'm Dead that eventually got nominated for a Grammy. So this is all perpetuating this hardcore work ethic that the world loves, you know? That'll kill you early. So right when I did the documentary, once Netflix bought it, I'm like, we're gonna celebrate, man, I'm getting a tattoo. So I get it, of course, like an idiot, where I sleep on the back of my head, where I, I, I go to bed. So I have on, on my neck, it says, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> and it's like, you know, four years later, I'm like, why am I having such a hard time sleeping? And then, <laughs> and then I was actually being interviewed by Ariana Huffington when she was doing her book, The Sleep Revolution. And she's like, you need to get rid of that tattoo. And she's like, I'm 75. Like she was 75 at the time. So she's like, I'm 75 right now. I will get a tattoo with you if you will change your tattoo to I'll sleep when I'm tired. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? This is legendary. Let's create some viral moments. Let's do it right now. 
and she didn't do it though <laughs> but anyways it's like the kind of thing it's like in my head like i have it tattooed on my body that's definitely permeating into my spiritual like whatever you want to call it well i think it's a funny story sure that's a hysterical story Um, want to see your skin? Yes. So we do a study called SPECT. Wow. And it measures blood flow and activity, how your brain works. It's different than a CAT scan or an MRI. They look at structure. We're looking at function. Mm. And it basically tells us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. Mm. And then my job becomes balancing. Mm -hmm. And so... If we look at your scan, there's these are your temporal lobes, and well, they're clearly hurt. Yeah. So if we go back to healthy, should be full. Wow. And wow, that's so interesting. Yours got whacked. Wow. And and how I can tell you've had concussions is if we look at the front. See this little valley? Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to have that valley. So your brain is becoming older than you. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. That's, and good that's not what yeah. you want. No. Yeah. But I'm, this is the first time seeing this. This is a really. Now, if you really do what I ask you to do, I can get way better. Can you actually grow the temporal lobes to look like that again? Yes. Like you really? Yeah. In fact, one of our Scan My Brain guys who we adore. Uh, Troy Gloss, who played third base for the Angels. Yeah. Brain was terrible because he was doing bad things to it. And yeah. two months later, it's dramatic. Two, only two months later. Two months later. Oh my God. Now you got to keep it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? exactly. yeah you got to yeah. keep Absolutely. it up. But wow. you don't want this brain. No, I no. Because no. this is going to give you memory problems yeah. and word finding mm. difficulties. Yeah. And Learning languages is going to be very difficult, Ben. <laughs> and wow, so, look at that. We can really see those temporal lobes are just, just mangled. They're and then, mangled. And then the front. Got and then the dip. prefrontal pole. It's like, no, we need to fix that. So the temporal lobes, what caused that to... So probably trauma. Okay. Because <laughs> physical trauma. The snowboarding, oh, okay. the yeah. inline skating, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the high risk behaviors. Yeah. Um, and then maybe the anesthesia didn't help either. I, and, oh, and a lot of people very good. never tell you. I didn't know it was that. that children that get anesthesia, general anesthesia, have a higher incidence of learning disabilities. Wow. I no idea. Adults, older adults that get anesthesia, have a higher incidence of dementia. So I'm not doing any celebrity boxings. Oh, please don't. No, no, I've uh, I've turned it down already. <laughs> I'm 44, man. I, I have four world heavyweight champion. Yeah, see, so you got Tyson over here. <laughs> I mean, it, that's the first thing I would do is try to find you if I was a boxer. I'd be like, I need to know my brain. <laughs> um, focus, okay. Planning, okay. Processing speed, okay. But not flexible. Okay. And that's going to go with the next scan I show you. You are positive and resilient, but not quite so social. Yeah, I... I are I, you more an introvert? I think so. I realize that more now. I get kind of... I, I didn't put this in the test, but like... Because of my... Who I am is very different than a normal person. So like, I, like before, if I was anonymous, and someone says hi, I'd be like, oh, hey. But if like when people like try to they yell my name in the airport, I'm like, oh, oh I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> then I have to get stopped and never take photos back and forth. You know, it's like a whole thing. I'm by myself. I feel like exposed. You know what I mean? So it's a different kind of. I've become more yeah, of an introvert. Many of my famous people are like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like more of an introvert now than I was when I was m more anonymous. But yeah. I'm very much an extrovert when I'm on stage. Like I. I demand all the attention when I'm on stage. I'm like, I'm here, let's party, but I need all your attention to make this work. And when I'm off stage, I'm like, you don't see me, 
hi, you know, like, I just want to just carry on, you have my meal, do this thing with my friends, or if I'm alone, like, I'm just going to race through wherever I need to go. Uh, even like walking here, if someone yelled my name and I was like quickly moving and then he raced up and he's like, Hey, I went to school with you. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. You broke the ice. I can have a normal human conversation with you. But if it's like, you know, you just don't know. Yeah. So it's, it's, been, it's been a bit weird. I didn't, it's weird. You know, I explain it. Yeah. <laughs> you have a busy brain. It's in this pattern. I call it diamond pattern that can okay. go with emotional trauma. Okay. Have you had significant traumas? The the biggest trauma that I can date now is the death of my best friend that happened two years ago because it was tragic. It, he was 45 and he just mm. had a heart attack, you know, so no one saw it coming. Someone that's it's not just a best friend, but he was my manager. He pretty much moved his entire life to support me and my life. And and uh, when someone does that for you, it's like a life partner. You know, this is like someone that I didn't even say, I never signed a contract with a guy, but we plan on doing business together probably for the rest of our lives because we just, the, the trust and the bond was so strong. So losing him, <clears throat> just like waking up <clears throat> one day and he's gone, like was, was so wild to me. Like it just was so like, I couldn't understand that. So that was, that was the biggest trauma. And so losing your business manager that's probably traumatic yeah now i don't have it your scam before then so i don't know yeah, if there were right. other things yeah and just because you have a busy brain it's like well if it's working for you great if it's not working for you we should find ways to calm it down yeah so busy is not necessarily bad or good it's it's more it how it affects on, your life yeah you always have to put it in the context right of your life so what, what do you do when you have emotionally high activity? What's like the, how do you balance that? Or so that? we want to figure out ways to calm it down. Okay. So meditation is a perfect balance. Uh -huh. Calms down your emotional brain, but activates your <laughs> thoughtful brain. Sometimes supplements like ashwagandha, theanine, GABA, magnesium can help settle things down. Okay. I want you to do hyperbaric oxygen like 40 times. You can actually get a chamber for your house. You already have a healing house. Yeah, I do. Brain and Body Power Max. What's Brain and Body Power Max? So two packets a day. Okay. I make it super easy. A great multiple vitamin. Not okay. a good one, a great one. Okay, fantastic. High dose, high quality fish oil. Okay. And a brain boost that works in six different ways. So you should notice after a month, you're not dropping words. Okay. That your memory that. is better. And then, I know. and just tell your team, is we're going to put sleep in this tour. Yes, yeah. And, and you have to, because they're looking at money and go, I'm the money. Yeah. If I don't work, we're not making money. Yeah, yeah. I'm the money. And the, yeah. the better I take care of myself, the longer we can do this. Yeah. So you're in control. Right. Not that you begin to start making mistakes. Yeah. Right. What a joy. I wish we had more time. It just went so fast. And then I want you to help me make brain health cool. You I'm here are for cool. It. I, I, That's you. the goal. Brain you're cool too. Cool. You're, like, <laughs> you're very cool too. You know, um, you definitely like it. I love your Instagram. I love you. Like you're, you know how to speak to the camera in a way that's concise and not someone's wiping away. Because a lot of the science, you know, the scientists and doctors that can, can, um, they talk, use two talk over words that are too big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You like say it right to the point and people can understand it. They can relate to it. So doing a great job. Well, let's be friends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Help you love your brain. I love that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>